knows Barry from Honolulu is a sympathizer of radical Islam, which is why he won't even put the two words together. And um, I have a firm belief that the country's been taken over from within. I believe it in my core. Everything I see confirms it. The king has no clothes. I will not justify or apologize for him anymore. I haven't for months now. It's as naked as the show Homeland is. He's working for the other side. Now you say, well, is he really working for the other side? It doesn't matter. If he is not opposing the other side, then he's working for the other side. Because the greatest threat in my mind to world stability is not Russia. It's the people who cut the heads off human beings while they're alive. It's the people who put people in cages, douse them in gasoline, set them on fire while they're alive. It's the radical Muslims who kidnap, capture young girls, Christian, Azidis, and others, rape them around the clock, and then sell them on slave auctions. All a fact of life, something you didn't hear in the UN from the great Pope. Pope didn't mention once, not once did this Pope, to his eternal shame, did this Pope who had the opportunity to alert the world to what's going on, to Christians in the Middle East, he said nothing. All he did was advance his socialist agenda. I have to tell you, it's a very sad time in human history that we're watching a Holocaust go on right in front of our eyes. Oh, it's on a minor scale, I realize, but if you're a 12-year-old girl who's being raped around the clock, I don't think that's on a minor scale, do you? No, I think it's on a major scale. What a country this used to be before this leftist takeover of every single one of our institutions. And you want me to sit here and pay attention to the 2016 election a year before any of them could possibly be sworn in? While all this is going on, we're supposed to look at Trump, Carson, Fiorina, Rubio, Bush, Cruz and Kasich and care about it? I don't care about it. Not a year, uh, uh, not, they have no power. Zero influence, no effect whatsoever. All that matters is now. And right now, Russia is on the move. And Russia should be our greatest ally, not our greatest enemy. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know, the old Arab adage, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, should be prevailing in your mind today. Who is your greatest enemy on the world? ISIS. ISIS is your greatest enemy. If they could, they would kill 200 million Christians and Jews on the planet. Ask people who know really what's going on. And right now, Iraq has a Christian population, which is one of the most ancient in the world, that's teetering on extinction because of genocide, because of Obama's do-nothing policies. The Christian population has dwindled from around 1.5 million in 03 to well below 200,000 now. Christians in the region have been brutally persecuted and crucified in their own churches, which are being used as torture chambers, in which Christians are given the option of converting to Islam or being slaughtered. That's because of Obama in the White House, the do-nothing president. The only one he's tough with are the Republican, is the Republican Party and the American conservative movement. So the fact of the matter is, we have a nightmare on our hands here. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. Who is our greatest enemy? ISIS. Who is the enemy of ISIS? Russia. Therefore, they're, they're our friend. It's as simple as that. Study history. Let them take out ISIS. First, they have to take out the, the quote, free Syrian army. It's a strategic move. They do it first. They don't go after the primary target uh, at New York Times. Oh, they're bombing the, 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 the good free Syrian army. All the boys and girls with tight dungarees and iPhones. Here we go again. The same crap we heard about Egypt. They were the avant-garde, those boys and girls in tight jeans, for the wolves who were waiting in the wings. The wolves of the Muslim Brotherhood in that case, and the wolves of ISIS in this case. That's what would take over Syria if you followed Barack Obama's subterfuge. But those of us who can play triple chess on an electronic board see what's going on. This is the Savage Nation playing quadruple chess on a triple board right here on your local station. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. As President of the United States, I am mindful of the dangers that we face. They cross my desk every morning. I lead the strongest military that the world has ever known. You mean you mislead the strongest military the world has ever known? or shall I say, had ever known. Welcome to hour number two of the Savage Nation. We're witnessing an unprecedented situation where a foreign power starts airstrikes without notifying America and then tells our military to get out of the way. And our military puts a um, physics professor and a contractor in charge of the Defense Department, that's Ash Carter, brilliant man in physics, Harvard University, uh, let us say, uh, wonderful scholar in his field, worked uh, as an advisor to military contractors for years. And uh, if you, in case you don't know who Ash Carter is, the head of the Defense Department, he used to work for old Jimmy Carter, right? Longtime wobbly, lifetime left-wing fanatic, game player, bumbler. I heard him speak today. I was screaming. I said, if I were listening to this and I were an, a Russian leader, I would be laughing at America. It's bad enough having these girls talk. Babble, girl talk, babble. Now we have this guy, the head of the military, comes out in a pink tie. On the day that he's supposed to stand up for the American military might, he comes out in another pink tie and goes on and on saying, well, we don't personally see it in the same uh, way they do. And uh, I would hope that Russia would see it in our way and come to the... Bu I never heard anything like this. No one speaks that way. This is bureau These are bureaucrats, academic bureaucrats deeply ingrained in the entire structure of the country, uh, especially the military, which has been purged by Barry. And as I said earlier, the purge has been going on for quite a while. Joseph Stalin, I told you, uh, executed his generals in the 1940s out of fear that they were plotting a coup against them. But they were not. And as a result of those purges, the Soviet military became unable to operate effectively. And other dictators have purged the military in paranoid fits. And today we're seeing, seeing the same thing going on with our military. A similar purge carried out not with bullets, but with smears, innuendos, and spurious legal charges. But it's, it is nevertheless a purge of senior military officers. And I actually named the names of this progressive Islamist takeover of the United States from within in the chapter zero military in government zero. I don't want to read you the chapter, but I have to quote certain sections of it. Why is Obama doing this? Why is this purge going on in reconstructing the military? Because Barry from Honolulu wants to transform the military from an institution of patriotic warriors, largely inspired by Christian principles, into an atheist, multicultural, progressive bureaucracy. And not only... Do they purge competent, battle-hardened officers and replace them with progressive academics, such as Ash Carter? They also purge chaplains committed to their faith and replace them with pseudo-chaplains who are willing to accept the progressive worldview regardless of their faith. They are expected to be enthusiastic about Islam, even though it's the ideology inspiring the maniacs that our military is supposed to be fighting. Why is this happening? Page 81. It's all part of the progressive Islamic takeover of America. In the private sector, they relentlessly attack small businesses run by Christians. In the military, they attack patriotic warriors and Christian chaplains. In both cases, anyone who resists their agenda is being destroyed. Purge of the military. Many examples. Great irony, isn't it? And so, my friends, we turn now to what's going on in the Middle East specifically. Russia strikes, airstrikes against free Syrian forces, not ISIS today. New York Times puts out the big smear that Russia has no intention of taking out ISIS, which is ludicrous. This is just a prelude to taking out ISIS, as I've said to you. And I'm no military expert, but I certainly have studied military issues long enough to, to see how the game is played. You don't go after your primary enemy when there's another force on the ground that may stand in your way or harm your own soldiers, unless you're a doofus 
What you do is you take out the forces on the ground that may not be friendly to your forces and get rid of them, sweep them away, and then go after your primary target. Because right now the Free Syrian Army can do grave damage to Russian uh, uh, ground troops who will be on the ground if, if they're not already there. And they want to have a clear field. They want to go right after ISIS and kill them. They will not bring them back to Moscow for a trial. They will not bring them back and let them spew their Islamic hatred for the West. They're just going to kill them on the field. And so I ask you today again, uh, if you agree with me that the enemy of our enemy is our friend, who is our greatest enemy in the world? Is it Russia? Russia wasn't our greatest enemy until Obama mu messed things up and made it a personal vendetta. Russia was our ally. The Cold War was over. Things were doing well. We, were, we had great trade and interaction with the Russian people and the Russian leadership. And then this maniac, this, this bungler came along, surrounded by his dumb sorority. And now we have a Cold War turning into a hot war. No, it's not Russia who, who, who composes our greatest enemy. It's radical Islam, the Islamist, ISIS. They're the greatest enemy of civilization since Adolf Hitler. And so if Russia's willing to do the job, what's wrong with that? Tell me why you would oppose that. Now, of course, you're going to tell me what you read in the New York Times today and then heard ad nauseum all over the media from Barbara Starr and the other uh, uh, bovine members of the female persuasion all day long. Well, they're not taking out ISIS. They're taking out the Free Syrian Army. Well, look at the long-term strategy, Barbara, because once they sweep the Free Syrian Army away, they'll go after ISIS. That's my guess. Of course, we don't know what might happen tomorrow. My gravest fear is that there'll be a, an accidental dogfight between Russia and the United States, which would be a nightmare. It would be a nightmare for all of us if that happened. God forbid that that happens. Now, where do you stand on this? Do you support or oppose today's airstrikes by Russia? I support them wholeheartedly. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. It's that simple. But many of you don't see it that way. Russ on WMAL, you don't see it that way. Tell the audience why. Because it's not about ISIS. It's not about Syria. It's all about Mr. Putin. He losing the war in Ukraine, who he started. He annexed Crimea illegally. And now this is his uh, typical passive-aggressive move. Before the meeting in UN, he made a move in Syria so to show the power that, that, that the rest of the world uh, uh, should all, all of that may all of that may be true, but don't you see in your own in your own vision that Obama is the same type of personality who's also doing it for his own self-aggrandizement? Do you actually think Obama's a savior of the Ukrainian people? He's not. He's not. He he could have done a lot more. Uh, Unlike in Syria, Ukrainians are willing to fight for their independence. All they need is weapons. With their bare hands, they stop Russian, Russian troops. But I don't. Understand. I understand. No, I understand that you you hate Russia because you're Ukrainian and you probably have every reason to hate to hate hate the Russian military. I get it. But looking at Syria, don't you think radical Islam is a problem? It is a huge problem. Absolutely, I agree with you there. But Russia is on the same level of the threat to the rest of the world as radical Islam. Well, now that's a leap in faith. Where do you see Russia blowing up churches, torturing Christians, and having armies rape young girls? You know that's not happening. And you know that the radical Muslims are doing that all over the Middle East. It's a well-established fact. It is well-established fact. But what does Russia do? They sponsor the terrorism. They sponsor the terrorism, of course, in Ukraine. And they sponsor the Assad regime. And they sponsor other... Uh, you know, they work Look, I hear, I hear in your voice... Uh, the pain that you're suffering because as a Ukrainian you probably have every reason to resent and hate Russia but this is not about Ukraine this is about Syria which is much different than Ukraine uh, maybe generically it's the same thing to you but specifically it's not the same species this is a much different species than the genus that you're talking about I'm glad you had a chance to express your heartfelt uh, feelings about this issue 855-407. Does anyone support the Russian Su-34 fullback bombers today? WABCJ, do you oppose or support the Russian bombs today? I wholeheartedly support the, uh, the, the Russian strikes because the Free Syrian Army and ISIS are one and the same. 
number one. Uh, number two, 